All right, uh, finding missing angle measures using trig. All right, so you should see similar steps to what we did before with missing sides. Okay, there is one new aspect here in order to find the angle. Okay, using trig. All right, so find a non-right angle in the triangle. Again, that's what we did before. Right, we would always find one of the non-right angles um, in the picture or in the setup. Okay, determine which uh, types of sides you were given when compared to that angle. Uh, interestingly enough, on these, you're going to have two sides. Like, you have to have two sides in order to do this. So you're actually going to know them. It's not going to be like an X like it was last time. The, op uh, the options are opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse when you're comparing it to one of those angles. Three, based on the two you choose, determine which trig ratio to use. Use SOHCAHTOA to help you. Your options are sine, cosine, and tangent from here. You set up the trig ratio. Now, this is an important piece here, okay? Too often, people will neglect this piece, right? And they'll just try to do everything in one step, okay? We're not there. We're still learning, okay? You, some people will be able to do this in one step pretty soon, okay? But I need you to understand the baseline before we get there because then you're going to get your brain too confused, okay? Setting up the trig ratio just like we did before. Remember, it's always sine, cosine, tangent of an angle is equal to something over something, Okay? Sine, cosine, tangent of an angle. It's always of an angle, okay? Equals something over something. Depending on the size, it could be opposite over hypotenuse or whatever it is. Step five, using the inverse trig functions, use algebra to solve. Okay, so these are your inverse trig functions. That's the big difference here. We're just applying this concept, um, and, it, and it helps us out with finding angles. Okay, your calculator has to be in degrees mode. We'll get in a little bit more into this, exactly what that is in just a second. Okay. All right, so. Let's go ahead and start off with uh, this example right here. Okay, we've got uh, find theta. Okay, you'll see that every once in a while, theta, right? Uh, it's referring to an angle, okay? When you see theta, typically it's referring to an angle. So theta is commonly used. It is a commonly used Greek letter for an angle. Okay, so theta, that's an angle. All right, first step, find a non-right angle in the triangle. Okay, use the one you're trying to find, right? We are trying to find this angle right here. That is a non-right angle, okay? That is a, that's my right angle, right? You're always going to have that symbol if it's there, okay? So that is my non-right angle. Always want to start there, but it's going to be my first step every time. Okay, so compared to this angle, that, that's my next step, right? Determine, determine what types of sides you are given when compared to that angle. So let's compare them. Compared to that angle, 12 is my opposite side. Okay, and then compared to this, right? This is my hypotenuse. It's directly across from my hypotenuse. So I've got O and H here. Okay, and right, so Katoa, somewhere on your paper. Okay, so now I have that, uh, so I don't have to remember everything at once in my head. Okay, but this is involving O and H. O and H. Okay, this is my only one that has O and H. Okay, so I have to use sine. So this is that step that a lot of people neglect. You have to write this step sine of the angle, sine of the angle is equal to 12 over 18. equal to 12 over 18. Cool. Okay. Now, we are in kind of a, a weird spot. Okay. Before, right, before when we were finding sides, it was one of these that was missing. It was one of these that was missing. Now it's my angle that's missing. So my goal, my goal is to get that by itself. I want this, I want theta equals something. That's my goal. Okay. Now that's where the inverse ratios come into play, all right? So what we're actually going to do here is we're going to use the inverse trig ratios and we apply them to both sides. Now, what the inverse trig ratio is essentially doing is it's kind of like get, getting rid of the sine, right? So it's like sine inverse, let's go ahead and write it, sine inverse of sine of theta, and I've got to do it to the other side, can't just do it to one, right? That's the fundamental rule of algebra. Okay, so sine inverse of 12 over 18. Okay, so all I did, right, is I introduced sine inverse to both sides. Okay, 
Now, that actually does the trick, okay? So sine inverse, right? Inverse is that word where it's like you're kind of flipping things, okay? So you're kind of switching your x and y, essentially, or you're, you're, you're switching your y and x, right? You're, you're flipping it around where it's kind of undoing a process, okay? So it's kind of undoing um, the process there. That's what the inverse is, right? You're, you're, if the function of x is equal to y, well, now it's, you know, a function of y equal to x. You're inverting the equation and undoing what was done before, okay? So once you do that sine inverse, okay, the calculator really helps you out from here, okay? The calculator helps you out. Um, and so these cancel, okay? So I am now actually left with exactly what I was looking for, okay? It's now equal to just data. Data is all by itself now, and it's just sine inverse of 12 over 18. So I'm going to write it, sine inverse of 12 over 18. Now, somebody consider to really see what the inverse is actually doing. So remember, sine, it was all, before it was sine of the angle, right? Sine of the angle. Well, sine inverse, sine inverse, these are sides. So the input is sides for sine inverse, but the input is angles for just normal sine. And the same would apply to cosine and tangent. Okay, so now I use the sine inverse. Okay, and luckily the calculator helps us out with that. Okay, because you can kind of see it right in there. Okay, but it's above sine. So here's the sine button. And then in blue right above it is sine inverse. So I can do second sine inverse. Okay, well, let me go, go back. Got to double check. We're in degree mode. Yep, okay, we're in degree mode. Okay, uh, now we'll do second sine inverse. And then 12 over 18. There we go. That's my answer. Okay, the angle is equal to about 41.8. Okay, keep in mind, we found an angle just now. That is an angle. Forty-one point eight degrees. Okay, so a little bit different, but similar setup, right? So we always start to compare to an angle. We compare it to an angle, we see my opposite and hypotenuse in this particular one, so I know I'm going to use sine. I set up this ratio exactly how I set it up before. Exactly how I set it up before. No difference here. The only difference is we don't know the angle, right? Before it was that we didn't know one of the sides. But you set this up exactly the same. Then you say, oh, look, I'm trying to find an angle now. Now I'm going to use my sine inverse or my cosine inverse or my tan inverse, and then we get it by itself, and we apply and put that into the calculator, and we're done. Okay? That's how we do those problems. Similar setup. Let's go example number two. Always start at my angle. There's my angle. Found it. Now I can approach the problem and determine what sides I'm given. Compared to theta, this is my adjacent side. There's my 90 degree angle. That's my hypotenuse. So I got to think about which one uses the adjacent, adjacent and the hypotenuse. There it is. Adjacent hypotenuse. That's cosine. So cosine of theta is equal to 4 over 10. Okay, 4 over 10. Cool. Now what? Oh yeah, I'm finding an angle. Okay, so I want to do cosine inverse on both. Cosine inverse of cosine of theta. Cosine inverse of 4 over 10. Okay, when we get pretty good at this, you don't necessarily have to write all this out, but it's good practice too. Okay, because you, you were literally seeing, okay, cosine inverse is canceling cosine. Cancel. Okay, now I'm left with theta is equal to cosine inverse of 4 over 10. And I can find that in my calculator. I'm double checking that I'm in degrees mode. I'm going back. I'm doing second cosine. Okay, you got to click that blue second. Second cosine and I'm putting in that value 4 over 10. I'm closing it and entering it. So it's 66.4. 66.4, that's my answer, done, okay? Last one on these. Surprise, surprise, we used sine the first time, or we used cosine the second time, we are using tangent, but let's see why. Start at the angle, always, 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 always start at the angle. Compared to the angle, what is three? Well, three is the opposite. Compared to the angle, what is 11? Well, 11 is the adjacent. Maybe we didn't have that written at the top of this paper. 
There it is. Got to use sine, cosine, tangent, SOHCAHTOA. That's our acronym that we use so commonly. We have O and A. Which one uses O and A? Not this one. Uses O and H. O and A. Nope. Not both of them. O and A. Yep. It's tangent. Tangent of the angle. It's always going to be sine, cosine, tangent of the angle. It's equal to O over A, 3 over 11. And notice that I'm finding the angle. I use my tan inverse on both sides. Uh oh. There we go. Okay. These cancel. I'm just left with theta now, tangent inverse 3 over 11. That's what I'll put into my calculator. What mode do I have to be in? I've got to be in degrees mode. Don't want radians right now. The time will come. All right, but tangent inverse second. All right, you're going to you're find tan above my thumb. Second, tan inverse. Okay, 3 over 11. That is my angle for theta. It is about 15.3 degrees. Okay, and that's it. That is what I'm looking for. Okay, uh, we now found theta. We found the angle using those trig ratios. And that is all for today. Okay, uh, these, once you get the hang of them, um, finding the angles, somewhat easier maybe. Uh, hard part is understanding when to use which, right? So like, if you if you have two sides and you're asked to find the angle, th that's when you know. If you again, if you're asked to find the angle, that's when you're going to use your inverses. Okay. If you're asked to find a side, that's when you just use the normal one and use algebra to solve from there. Okay. So it is. Uh, you know, you gotta kind of sit there and soak it in to really understand um, when to use which one. Okay. That's it for this.